So next in my series is we're going to talk about sleeping gear. So when I first <clears throat> went elk hunting, I was staying down by my car in a tent that was 20 yards from my car, and I could take anything I wanted to. So I took a big cot, one of those big fold-out cots, slept on it. Now, uh, I'm not dragging that down, but if you want to take a cot and do base camp sleeping, go ahead. Uh, what we're going to cover here more is if you were going to hike in, what options you have. So, again, like right here, this is your just plain Jane, cheap Coleman, uh, Walmart special sleeping bag. This works great in Texas for day camping, for what I call park camping, where you... Uh, park your car, and uh, trunk camping, that's what they call it. This is great for trunk camping. Again, this bag is not heavy enough pretty much for where I go. It's only like a, a 40 degree bag. So this is great for Texas, not so great for where I go hunting, but you can always go with this. It's synthetic, it's inexpensive. It's a sleeping bag, it works. Just make sure the uh, degree rating on it matches where you're going to. So if you're going where most people hunt elk, you're going to get down below freezing, so a 20 degree bag is probably the best thing to take with you, or a 30 degree bag, leave that up to you. Uh, but that's just a plain Jane, you know, just cheap sleeping bag. This right here, this is a rollout mat. This is what the Army gives its people to sleep on. Uh, it's just foam, it's thin, it's fairly lightweight, but it's not, it's not very comfortable at all. So. That's kind of my minimum standard. This is the stuff that I had in my garage. I took it, slept on the mat on the cot, slept in the cheap sleeping bag, and had a couple blankets to throw over me if I got cold or stuff down in the bag with me. You can always stuff additional blankets down in the bag to increase your uh, warmness level. So, like, fleece, bank, uh, fleece blankets work really great for that. Okay, so last year I went up the mountain. We stayed on the mountain. We were five miles up the mountain, and... 1,000 to 1,500 feet higher than where the cars were. It gets colder the higher you get. So uh, I took this sleeping bag here. Uh, I'll take it out in a minute to show you. But this sleeping bag here is the military sleeping bag. It is the modular military sleeping system. It's the black bag with the Gore-Tex shell. The nice thing about this bag is it's wrapped in a Gore-Tex waterproof shell, uh, which helps retain some of the heat, but it also keeps any, I could literally, in this bag, sleep out without a tent. I could just sleep in this Gore-Tex bag, and as long as it didn't like rain directly on me or rain hard, I'd probably be okay. It, it's, the bag is designed for military people who may or may not be able to set up a tent. So, in my thinking, hey, the military uses a great bag, right? Well, here's the catch. This bag is big, and it weighs six pounds. Six pounds doesn't seem like a lot, but a big six pound object, I had to strap this to my chest and it really got in the way. When I was hiking up using my trekking poles, I bumped the bag, I had to sit down and rest. And anyway, this bag was a major pain in my rump. So, uh, let's set that military bag there, I'll show it to you in a minute. Uh, now the new bag that I got, oh well, let's, let's cover what I slept on up there. So I decided that I would get one of these mats. This mat weighs about three pounds, and it goes down smaller than this because it's full of air right now, but it's one of the ones that when you open the valve, it uh, inflates itself. It just kind of grows and puts air in it, and then when you want to deflate it, you have to keep the valve open. You got to roll it up real tight and push all the air out. So I thought, that's great. It's a nice, thick, heavy-duty mat. Uh, it'll be great to sleep on, and it was. The only problem is it's like carrying a three-pound lightweight log with you. This gets in the way. It's really, really big. So this is what I took with me last year, and it was not that it was... Together they're nine pounds, and they're the size of my backpack. I took my sleeping gear and it was the size of my, my backpack on my back. So I couldn't put it anywhere. I had to strap everything to the outside of the pack. I was very bulky and silly looking. I'll try to include a picture of what I look like coming down the mountain with all my gear on uh, to cover uh, what it looked like, but so for Christmas, I asked my wife for this. This right here is a inflatable mattress. It is not near as tough as this one, but if you look at it, it is significantly smaller. My buddy slept on one of these. As soon as it's got air in it, it's just as comfortable as the big one, 
but it shrinks down a lot smaller and it weighs half the weight. It weighs a pound and a half. So I'm taking this and I can put this in my bag instead of strapping it on the outside. So I'm taking this to sleep on this year. It's got a little repair kit in it. If you pop a hole in it, you can repair it up on the mountain. But pound and a half there. And then my new sleeping bag is a down bag. This is a, this, they're in the same container, but this right here is my new North Face bag. It's a 20 degree bag, uh, about the, about a little bit, but about the same as this synthetic bag here. The synthetic bag I think is rated to 10 degrees, but uh, this is just about as warm and it weighs two and a half pounds. And if you'll notice, it is significantly smaller. In fact, I got to buy a new compression sack that's uh, not as big around and as thinner to stuff it into and compress it because this is just a ball now and I need it to be more like, uh, like this one but smaller and thinner. And I can easily strap that to the bottom of the pack and not have it be in the way. So let's take the bags out and just show you what we're talking about here. Compression sacks are important for sleeping bags because it shrinks down their size to make them more manageable. So this is the Gore-Tex shell. It's camouflaged on one side. Yeah. So this is the Gore-Tex shell. And then this is the black synthetic bag, okay? Now the black synthetic bag here and the Gore-Tex shell, when combined, are equal to this tiny sleeping bag. So you're going to ask yourself, besides the fact that one is two and a half pounds and one is six pounds, what's the major difference? Well, one thing to understand is, is that this North Face bag is a down bag. It has a fairly water-resistant shell, but hypothetically it has to breathe. And if this bag gets wet, it doesn't work very well. The synthetic bags, though, the synthetic bags <coughs> work well. Uh, by the way, this is the first time I've actually unrolled this thing. The synthetic bags, when they get wet, still function properly and will pretty much keep you warm, kind of like wool socks. The down bags, though, if they get wet, they don't work near as well. Once they're wet, they're, you're kind of got to dry them out and you're screwed. So, I'm going to take the synthetic bag and leave it in the car and leave it at, at base camp and when I go out in the woods with my backpacking tent, I'm going to take the North Face bag and I'm going to also probably uh, buy a compression sack for it that is waterproof so that anytime I leave my tent uh, in the morning after I get out of bed, I'm going to stuff my bag in the waterproof sack and I don't worry about it getting wet and I'm inside a backpacking tent so if it rains, Hopefully, I've done my job well, and I'm not going to have water run in and soak the bottom of my bag. Plus, if you're laying on top of an air mattress, it's even less likely that water will come in and get on your bag. But you never know. You don't want to get the bag wet. You want to have spare clothes and way to build a fire and all that. Uh, but anyway, I'm going basically from a 9-pound setup to a 4-pound setup. I'm dropping 5 pounds and more than... I'm going down to 40% of the size I was carrying last year, I'm just guessing. But I'm dropping 5 out of the 9 pounds, so more than 50% weight reduction, and I'm decreasing the overall size of all the components by uh, about going from 100% down to 40%, so more than half. So more than half the weight, more than half the size, and these are just things you got to think about. Am I going to be a base camp camper where I can bring the kitchen sink? Or am I going to be the guy who's going to pack in deep into the woods and sleep where the elk are so when I wake up in the morning I can hear them bugling and get into position uh, easily without getting lost or having to wake up extra early? Uh, it's up to you. You hunt however you want to, but uh, I'm taking, actually I'm taking both options. And if I have a base camp near the car with my big tent, I'll have my backpacking stuff to take in with me. Since I have both, I might as well take both. But I'll have my base camp gear and I'll have my backpacking uh, sleeping in the interior gear. So I hope this helps you. Uh, and uh, yeah, just do your research. By the way, uh, like my buddy, he's telling me his sleeping bag is great. His sleeping bag is like almost $700. This bag right here uh, ran about $150 on sale. And they're pretty, as far as temperature rating, size, weight consideration, they're not that far apart. He's got the better bag, but when you're looking at bags, uh, you don't have to go with a $700 sleeping bag. Uh, you know, don't go with a $50 or $60 or even $80 sleeping bag unless you're base camping it. 
But if you want a good backpacking uh, uh, bag, and I'll, I'll give you a link to the website where I found this. Uh, they have really good deals right now until the end of February. Uh, then then uh, you can find a bag that matches your needs at a what I would call reasonable price compared to the other ones. Now this website it has the six, five, seven hundred dollar bags on it. But again, uh, as a as a hunter, you're going to be carrying some weight in, and that's just how it is. So I hope this video helped you. Sorry it went long, but have a good one. Stay warm and sleep well out there.